Everyone's talking about the first image of Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Take a look. Let me be the one. What the? Meanwhile, we're talking about the Atom. Welcome to Meanwhile, the show that introduces you to the world of comics and connects it to the shows and games you already know and love. My name's Nathan Vaudre, let's get started. Ray Palmer showed up on Arrow this season, and he's been working on a mysterious power suit to help him fight crime. As he debuts the suit, we thought we'd take a closer look at DC's pint sized hero. And in order to do that, we're shrinking Megan, and she'll do the show from the bookshelf. Nathan, I didn't agree with that. The Atom is Ray Palmer, a brilliant physicist and professor at Ivy University in Ivytown, Connecticut. While he's out one day, he discovers a fragment of a white dwarf star, which he takes back to his lab where he realizes that if he grinds it into a lens and focuses ultraviolet light through it, he can shrink anything in the beam. Anything? Yup, anything. Like this coffee cup. Or this picture of a monkey. Or Chris's pants. <laughs> But there is one hitch in the discovery. In order to shrink the object, its matter has to be destabilized. And once it's destabilized, it kind of blows up. Am I gonna blow up? Forget that, are my pants gonna blow up? Relax, nothing is going to blow up. Just explode a little. That's the same thing! So, he does what any good scientist would do. Experiments on himself? No, Chris, he's a good scientist. He puts it away and takes his students and his girlfriend, Jean Loring, on a field trip where they're caught in a cave in and trapped and are probably gonna die. But luckily he brought the lens with him and realizing that he'll probably explode, he uses the lens anyway to get himself out of the cave and rescue his students just before he blows up. But he doesn't blow up. So I'm not gonna blow up? Am I, am I gonna blow up? Seems there's a little something in his genetic structure that saves him. Or, since some of the origin stories differ a bit, it could be the suit that he builds made of a compression matrix that holds his structure together. The suit is also invisible at his normal size, but when he shrinks, its atoms get closer together and cause his costume to become visible. Now, you may say, so what? He can make himself tiny. I step on tiny things. You think you're better than me? Maybe we don't step on tiny things today. To which I would say, I'm not just saying ant small, I'm saying subatomic particle small. He can shrink so small that his favorite way to travel long distances is to make a phone call and then ride the electrons along the phone line to his new destination. Oh! So small that he can float on air currents. Yeah! So small that he discovers microscopic universes located in the atomic structure of our universe and has adventures there. Oh! So small that he can fit in his hand into that po tiny pocket in their jeans. Oh. oh. What, you think you're better than me? The Atom uses his powers to face off against villains such as the Bug-Eyed Bandit and the time-traveling Kronos, and even is one of the founding members of the Justice League. Though he and his girlfriend Jean Loring eventually get married, their relationship doesn't hold up to the constant pressure of his scientific studies and adventuring off to subatomic universes, and they get divorced. But their relationship continues through good and bad, with Ray always feeling responsible for her. Aww, that's so Is she coming back? Identity Crisis by Brad Meltzer and Rags Morales. After Sue Dibney, the wife of the elongated man, is murdered, it seems that someone is targeting the family and loved ones of the DC heroes. This begins a tense murder mystery with many suspects and many dark secrets. While primarily it's an ensemble piece, the Atom figures prominently in the storyline as he races to protect his now ex-wife, Jean Loring. It's a fascinating look at the sacrifices that these heroes and their families make to do their jobs, and it has major repercussions for the Atom and the DC universe as a whole. Brightest, oh my god, you're back. I rode on the back of an oxygen molecule. I fought an ant the size of a skyscraper. Okay, well, I, I made toast without burning it today, so we both had pretty big days. <laughs> Brightest Day, the Atom Special by Jeff Lemire and Mahmoud Asrar. After the events of Identity Crisis, Ray Palmer disappears for a while and is replaced by Ryan Choi, a graduate student at Ivy University. He returns for the DC event Final Crisis and Blackest Night, but this book, Brightest Day, sees him finally settling back to his roots. It also provides an updated version of his origin story and a great jumping on point for the character as we see where he started and where he's going. 
DC's Convergence event will be reintroducing heroes from alternate timelines and universes, and the Atom is one of these characters. In the Atom number one, which will be available in April 2015, we get Ray Palmer from before Flashpoint and the new 52 universe. Written by Tom Pyre, a longtime writer of the character, Ray is brought back, but he is hearing a mysterious voice in his head, and his quest to prove that he's not crazy leads him directly into conflict with the guy who killed the substitute Atom, Deathstroke. So that should go well. Now that you know where to start with The Atom, be sure to subscribe so that you know when next Thursday comes around you won't miss the next episode of Meanwhile. And be sure to leave any story suggestions that you have in the comments section below. Meanwhile, we were going to shrink Chris down, but then we realized nobody would notice the difference. Hey! Meanwhile, we're going to shrink me down to a subatomic particle, and I'm going to come through the internet to hang out with you. Seriously, move over. Mm, turn off your firewall!